Welcome to Motherhood Unstressed, a podcast for anyone who wants to let go of stress and anxiety and learn how to be more fully present in life. Each week, I'm speaking with experts in the fields of entrepreneurship, nutrition, mindset, sex, spirituality, and so much more. I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. I'm a writer, a speaker, and an entrepreneur. Through my own struggle to balance the demands of motherhood and life, I discovered that to truly be happy, we need to be present. Your journey to feeling less stressed and more blissfully present in your own life starts right now. Hey guys, in this episode, I am speaking with master business and life coach, Susan Hyatt. She's also the author of The Bear Book and Program. And basically she was a crazy successful real estate agent, but she was completely miserable. And after reading Martha Beck's book, Finding Your Own North Star, she decided to become a life coach. And then 12 years later, she has been featured in the Oprah magazine and 17 and Cosmo and just had tremendous success. And I think it's because her intention to help her sisters, you know, rise up the way she helped herself deal with body and image issues was so pure and real. And that's why she's experienced such success. So she takes us through her program in this episode and what you can do to start ditching that diet mindset, which is really just an insane uh, hamster wheel where you're never where you want to be and just start loving yourself because isn't that what it's all about? Life is so short. Let's live our lives fully with love and kindness towards ourselves. And I think after this episode, you're really going to embody that yourself. So enjoy. This and all the episodes are brought to you by Motherhood Unstressed CBD. This is the product line that I created with the intention of helping you, the listener, get through your day with less stress, less anxiety, less pain, less inflammation, so many things that CBD helps with. And I wanted to create the best product that I could. So we use USA Grown Hemp. It's all organic. And the capsules with ashwagandha and green tea are actually amazing for your liver. Ashwagandha is an amazing liver detoxifier, which is something I think a lot of people don't realize. In addition to helping your body battle stress, it actually helps cleanse your liver. And with all of the environmental toxins that we are faced with every single day, our livers need all of the help that they can get. And so that's what the capsules are great for. And I love the tincture because it's actually not an oil. It's a water-soluble Uh, medically structured uh, compound. And so you can put it in liquids and it will still be bioavailable to you. Um, And I actually put it, if I'm not putting it underneath my tongue every morning, I'm putting it in my coffee before I head off for my day. And it's just so marvelous. And I, if I don't take it that day, I notice it. So you can get yours at motherhoodunstressed.com. Or if you would like it in your neighborhood, just ask your favorite natural food market or salon or coffee shop to stock it and just have them reach out to me on Instagram or through my website at motherhoodunstressed.com. And we will get it out to your neighborhood as soon as possible. Well, hey, Susan, welcome to the show. I am so excited that you're here. Thank you, Liz. I am so pumped to be here and talk with your audience about Bear. Love it. And I'm just going to jump right in with a question. Tell me about the moment that you decided to make a career out of inspiring women, uplifting women to lose weight and love themselves. Well, it's, it's really interesting because actually at the, in two days, I have my 12 year anniversary as a coach. Um, and so basically what led me to coaching was that I was a burnt out workaholic real estate agent with two little, little kids. My kids were six and eight at the time. And, and, and I felt guilty for struggling. I don't know, you know, I'm sure some of your listeners experienced this. Everything on the outside looked great. I had this great career. I was making a lot of money. I had this great husband and these two beautiful children, house, the whole thing. I had checked all the boxes and I was miserable inside and I couldn't figure out why. And I felt really guilty about that. And so um, I noticed that I was using food and alcohol as a way to cope. And, um, and I decided there were a couple of pivotal moments for me. One was my mom coming to visit, um, when I was still in real estate and she made me promise not to work Mm -hmm. while she was visiting. And I alerted all of my clients like, Hey, my family's coming into town. It's Easter weekend. I'm not going to be working. 
And I had these clients from out of town that I had shown houses to for months and they kind of disappeared. They unannounced popped back into town and said, Hey, we want to put an offer in on 123 Happy Street. And it was the biggest real estate transaction of my career. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I felt miserable either way. I felt like I really was letting my mom down. But on the other hand, um, I felt an obligation to provide for my family. So I did on Easter Sunday, go sign a contract on this house. And I came home and just kind of collapsed in the kitchen. And my mom was like, I don't know what's happened to my daughter. You know, this just isn't you. You used to be so happy and full of life. And, and you just don't seem like you're enjoying yourself anymore. And and here, but here was the kicker. She said, I am going to keep these kids for a couple of days and I want you to plan and do whatever you want. And I started to cry because I couldn't think of anything appealing. I had no hobbies. I was so stressed out and exhausted. The only thing I could think of doing was either getting caught up on laundry <laughs> or grocery shopping by myself, which if you're a mom with small kids, you get that. Like, can I just please walk through Target by myself and have some coffee and not, you know, have to argue about why we're not buying everything. Mm. And, and I, in that moment, I knew I'm like, something has got to change. I have got to get my stuff together here. And I entered therapy, but I also started devouring lots of self-help. And I found a great book. I do highly recommend to anyone, uh, Dr. Martha Beck's book, Finding Your Own North Star. Hmm. Um, I went into Barnes and Noble. Remember that old book? Um, what color is your parachute? Yeah. Do you yeah. Remember that one? And Classic. I was sort of like, I don't know what I want to be. You know, I had been a PR agent and I was a stay at home mom for a couple of years before I re-entered the workforce as a realtor. And I was like, I just need to figure out, like, I can't figure out what my passion is. I don't know what I want to do. And I found Martha's book instead. Um, and I really feel like it was divine intervention because mm-hmm. I would sit in my bathtub and weep into the pages of this book. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, it looks like Liz that like somebody dunked it in the ocean and then set it out in the sun to dry. <laughs> it's not ocean. It's my salt tears oh. pouring into those pages. And, but my life started to get better. I started to do the things in the book and, um, found out because I started stalking Martha back online that she trained people to do something called life coaching, which mm-hmm. at that point in time, I didn't know about. And um, I had one of those, like the sky, the clouds in the sky parted. And I felt like I was bonked on the head, struck by lightning. I was like, what? This is a <laughs> thing? Um, and I went and I trained with her in Arizona, um, both for my regular life coach training and then my master level. But it was after I became a coach that I started to deal with the food and body issues that had plagued me. And, um, and that was a whole different journey where I felt like, oh my gosh, if I was, I was what I would call a professional couch potato and a junk food junkie, swinging through the McDonald's or Taco Bell drive through like three times a day, refusing to move my body um, because I had better things to do, like eat more Doritos. <laughs> and, um, and just, you know, I was just still trying to cope with being a mom of these young kids. And when I went through that journey, I was like, if I can clean this up and learn how to take exceptional care of myself, I can teach anybody to. And so that's when I added, I would say for 11 and a half years now, I've helped thousands now of women um, around issues with food and body and developed bear in that process. Right. And that's, I think that's the key right there is you had to go through the process of actually doing your own internal work, healing yourself on that level, which is I think the hardest thing that anybody is ever tasked with in this life yep. and you did it. And then were you ever hesitant after you, you know, you're still going through the work, I'm sure every single day, mm-hmm. were you ever hesitant to, to actually take that leap and start, you know, putting yourself out there and helping other women? Because I think a lot of women, especially our listeners, mm-hmm. feel exactly how you felt. They don't really know what they want to do, but they've been through something and they've, you know, risen above what pushed you to actually say, Hey, I'm going to do this. Well, I think um, a couple of things. The initial 
uh, decision. And it was really scary for me. I live in a small town in Indiana where 12 years ago, I mean, no one where I live had ever heard of a life coach. And it was very scary for me to ditch a multiple six figure real estate practice and say, I'm going to leave that and try to make a living off of something no one had heard of. Even my husband, who is ultra supportive, was like, okay, he would stand in the doorway of my office with pie charts and spreadsheets <laughs> and say like, he's like, okay, I believe in you, but I just don't, under- what's your business model? Like, I just don't even understand how you think you're going to make any money at this, which a lot of my clients I hear from again. And it was scary for me because I had struggled with lots of different issues to now call myself a life coach because I think coaches in general um, put a lot of pressure on themselves to pretend to be perfect. Oh, I'm a life coach. I have mastered life. And, you know, that's not really it. We're all just learning and growing always. But I remember sitting in my tiny real estate office on this orange striped footstool. (laughs) And so I'm sitting on this little footstool crying and I remember thinking and making the promise, if I get my shit together, I promise, I was like promising God, the universe, my higher self, I promise I will not leave my sisters behind. I will, I promise I will share. And I think about that all the time when I do continuously get nervous and scared at every level, there's a new level of vulnerability of, you know, trolls online and who does she think she is and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, I think about that scared, miserable real estate agent and how many women are living that. And it's like, you made a promise. So you better get over yourself because this is bigger than you. This isn't about you. Um, and, and that is what has kept me going. Oh, I love that. That just gave me chills because I think that that's true. That's why you've been so successful with Bear and your program. We're going to talk all about that, but it's because of that initial intention. That intention was pure. It, it, it absolutely was, man. And I still have that little, I need to go take a picture today and sit on it. I still have that little school <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because it's like, I'm always like, remember your why, you know, because it does, it, there are hard moments. There are like, you know, taking a red eye from one thing to the other for obligations. And, the, and there are moments of like, you know, I, I opened up my Facebook a couple of mornings ago and we were running a new Facebook ad campaign. And um, it's hilarious because for the book, Bear, it's all about loving the skin that you're in. So the Bear photo shoots, there are all kinds of different photos, like me with groups of women in nude colored bras and panties. Um, there are other photo shoots where I'm fully clothed. And like people, t- internet trolls have such a hard time with a woman who feels powerful. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I woke up to all those comments and it's like, you know, when you read stuff like that on a daily basis, you, you have to be committed to your why, because otherwise, why would you bother? Right. Exactly. Well, that definitely comes across. And I want to talk to you more about something that you talk a lot about, which is the fallacy of willpower and, yeah. you know, how that's not really a thing. So, so what do you think is the real key to transformation? What do you talk to your, your followers and your clients about? Mm-hmm. Well, it's interesting because I used to, to bow at the throne of willpower. And I used to think, gosh, if I just had more willpower, if I were just stronger, you know, I'm just weak. I just love food too much. I just don't have what it takes. And I think so many women think those things. We're just brainwashed, like go big or go home. You know, if you can't run with the big dog, stay on the porch. You know, all this messaging, no pain, no gain, that, um, that you must develop this massive willpower to be successful and to have transformation and to have wonderful things happen. And honestly, when you think about women and moms in particular, And all the things that we do on a daily basis that require so much willpower, right? You know, like giving the toddler the right sippy cup um, before a tantrum happens and knowing, you know, um, who's having pajama day and shuttling everybody around, like doing all the things we do 
for our families, our communities, our offices, the world, and you want to suggest to me that we need more, something more um, willpower to adhere to this bullshit diet. I don't think so. I think what women need more of and need to turn towards and what's been proven over and over again by myself and my clients is more pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I kind of turn this whole diet mentality on its head and that like, actually, you don't need more deprivation. You're strong. You are strong. What you need is to take care of yourself based on what you crave. So we tend to put what we want and our desires on the back burner because, I mean, think of everything you've heard, like, oh, it's just not your season. Like after the kids are grown, you can do those things. Or, you know, the kids come first, the spouse or partner comes first, the job comes first. And honestly, when we put ourselves on the front burner, everybody gets a front burner. That's, yes. that's what it's like, get that, understand that. Because as long as you put yourself on the back burner, it's going to continue to be a shit show. <laughs> it's, it, it is Absolutely. It, right. And pleasure. When I say pleasure, people tend to think I'm talking about sex, which yes, physical intimacy is for sure one form of pleasure, but there's all different kinds of pleasure. And, you know, there's comfort, intellectual stimulation, just straight up fun, um, and what's interesting, though, for, for those of you listening who are like, yeah, 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 here's all this life coachy stuff that I should just <laughs> have more pleasure. Here's the thing. Here's what you need to know is that there are scientific studies that prove something called the pleasure principle, which means that your amazing body is wired to experience pleasure on a consistent daily basis. And when it does metabolism and hormones level out, your body is flooded with all the feel-good hormones, and cortisol levels drop. And cortisol for women <clears throat> is terrible, spikes mm. levels. And so for all of you who are like, yeah, 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 that you're still buying into the no pain, no gain, listen, pleasure, vitamin P is where it's at because that is much more likely to get you a result that a diet promises you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I can attest to that because, I mean, it was really like me studying abroad in France where I finally wrapped my head around this idea of pleasure because there it's like they don't even question it. Like it's it's a glass of wine with lunch. It's, you know, you're strolling, you're having your coffee. I mean, it's just so ingrained in the culture. I wonder if it's just American culture where we feel like we have to go, go, go and mm -hmm. be martyrs and do it all for everyone else and be on the back burner, mm -hmm. which again is insanity because then everyone's miserable because you're like crazy and yelling at everybody. <laughs> What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's just culture? You know what? I'm so glad you brought that up because honestly, I became more committed to understanding this when I started to travel. And you're mm -hmm. right. Um, in France, in Italy, in Spain, um, they definitely understand this concept of lingering and pleasure and like having a meal and slowing down. And it is, our culture is so puritanical, right? Like you play mm -hmm. after you work, dessert after you, you know, eat your veggies and it's always delayed gratification, work this nine to five forever, and then you can retire and do what you want. And, um, I would say American culture, Canadians aren't far behind, although they're not as bad, I don't think, as we are. And Germans, like we all tend to be like this work, 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 like this hardcore. Um, in fact, some of the contractors, I do retreats, um, a lot of retreats all over the world. And my contractors in like, con by contractors, I mean like tour guides and, um, you know, cooking schools and stuff like that. They always joke with me that, Americans, we expect an email reply immediately. And when I'm communicating with them, I understand that it may take three, four days to get a reply. Whereas in the US, we're like, well, I tracked it. She hasn't even opened it. And it's been three <laughs> hours, right? Like we're so uptight. Yeah. And so I do think that part of it is, right? And also when I travel, when I look at like, is there a gym nearby that I can use while I'm there? You are really hard in Italy, yeah. in Amalfi Coast. Are you kidding me? Like I've had to sneak into uh, the one hotel gym in the whole town because they're just like, use the stairs, go right. for a walk. What exactly. are you talking about? 
Exactly. Every single day. I love that you said that. Um, but back to Bear. Tell me about the genesis of Bear and, and what it is and who is it for and just go all into what you're doing. So Bear, I joke, is the Beyonce of the diet industry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Bear is a seven-week program, but the book has lots of client stories and um, will take you on a journey of becoming a woman who becomes awake to what diet culture has taught you, unwinding that, and then figuring out what feels like love for you. So the whole premise of Bear is basically that um, we have been fed as women since birth this idea that our value is our external and also that the goal is to shrink yourself as much as possible. And so I say that Bear is really, instead of a weight loss program, it's a life gain program. And what that means is we're going to talk about how to take amazing care of yourself through some pretty unorthodox exercises um, and, and have you just become awake to what magazines and TV and culture at large is feeding you. Because culture, diet culture is very is invested in keeping you on this $100 billion dollar um, rat race, hamster wheel of not enoughness. And so what I have done, I, I definitely going from a woman who was swinging through a fast food drive through three times a day to a woman who enjoys her food, savors her food, no food is off limits, um, working out from a place of love instead of from a place of punishment. It's really a way for women to wake up and take their power back from an industry that wants to keep you distracted. This seems like a feminist approach to dieting and body image. I mean, I love it. It is. It absolutely is. Um, and it, it basically, I don't know also if you have heard the phrase or read about the invisible workload of women. Have you seen any of the research on this? Mm -mm. Oh my God. I'm going to send you the link to this article because I think your listeners would eat this up. So, so my kids are 18 and 20 now, but back when they were really little and my husband and I were both working, he's a commercial real estate and developer and I was in residential real estate and we were doing all the things. And I would always be like, why are you able to lay down on the couch a couple hours before me? Uh, you know what I mean? Like, and we would get into this tit for tat about who did more. And I used to joke that I wish and these were not my best moments. We were in therapy about this. But I used to say, like, I wish we could hire a film crew, an independent study <laughs> <laughs> to follow us around for a week and tally up who did more. And I would be the winner. You'd I would kill him. Right? <laughs> and he was always like, well, I took out the trash and I paid taxes or some ridiculous response. So a couple of years ago, this, this author, God, I wish I could remember who it was, but we'll find out, um, wrote this piece on something called the invisible workload of women. So it's even if you have what would be considered even Stephen responsibilities, like there's a checklist. Yes, you each are doing your quote unquote fair share. Women still have this invisible part-time job that isn't rewarded or acknowledged, which is, you know, we are the keeper of all the things. We know, you know, when vaccinations need to happen and we know like when the pets need to go to the vet and we know where everything is and we're the ones that, you know, have pajamas laid out for pajama day or whatever it might be. And we do the emotional heavy lifting typically for the family as well. Mm -hmm. And that's an extra part-time job. And so when the article came out a couple of years ago, I emailed it to my husband and I said, okay, so this is what I used to try to articulate all those years ago in therapy, but I just didn't have the words. Mm -hmm. And do you know what he emailed me back? But I just took out the trash this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Like Back to therapy. <laughs> right. You're never going to understand no. and whatever. But the point is, the point of me bringing it up is that I feel like Bear actually exposes, mm -hmm. helps a woman realize that invisible workload, but also do something about it. So there's a part, the first step of it is called environmental detox, where you're basically an investigative reporter in your life for that first week. 
and you're paying attention to what's coming at you through all your senses. So not just what you're putting in your mouth, but what are you watching and listening to and peer conversations and relationships and assessing, you know, where's my energy going? Because honestly, when we are spending so much of our mental capacity counting calories, tracking macros, weighing ourselves, weighing our food, um, punishing ourselves with exercise, what if we could be free from that and devote that towards what really matters for us in our lives? And, um, and it, what I'm running a, a book club right now for the book, and it's so interesting to have thousands of women in this group who'd never heard of me. You know, they just have the book and they are not, they cannot even believe what they're tolerating. It's the first time they're looking at that. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, no wonder I'm exhausted. No wonder I can't seem to ask for the raise or, you know, get to the gym or whatever it is I want to do because I'm so busy doing this nonsense. So what do you think it is? I mean, do you think people don't want to, you know, dive deeper and really see what they've been suppressing so they, they fill up their schedules with everything else? Or do you think they're just honestly too busy to know to have that self-awareness? I think it's a combination. So I think that we're taught to worship busy in our culture, number one. And, the, and we think that's just how it is. And we think, well, if I want to have nice things, if I want to whatever, then I better paddle faster and not taking the time to like really assess, you know, why am I friends with this person? Why do I let the woman in the cubicle next to me just talk about her latest diet nonstop? You know, why am I going to Weight Watchers and counting points for years and never having anything change? Why do I let my spouse or partner say those things or do those things or leave that to me? And I think that it is uncomfortable to wake up and see like, oh, oh, this is why I'm eating a bag of Doritos at night. Um, and then once you're aware and awake to it, setting boundaries, making changes, doing all those things. But what's cool about the bear process is um, I have organized it in a way that seems fun, like, right? Like there's, it's a hot pink or a, a bubblegum pink cover. I'm in a <laughs> bubble bath on the cover and you get in you're like, this is fun. Um, but once you get in it, <laughs> You just, then I have you, right? And then you can't, then you can't not know what you know and changes can happen. And you got them on the beach. They're, they're training to be seals at that point. Right, right, right. It's too late. I love it. I love it. So, I mean, there's so much that I want to get into. We don't have the time, but you know, if there was one big actionable step that our listeners could take that, you know, you, you created through bear, what would that be? You know, to break it down into the simplest thing, I was talking about this with my trainer at the gym because his wife is all about the book. And the guiding question of the whole thing is what feels like love. So I had, I had a woman, or she's in my book club right now, and she's like, okay, I haven't read the book. I just bought it. I joined this book club, and I'm embarrassed to admit that I just started the seven day cabbage soup diet. Oh. And so she, she thought that I was gonna like hammer her on it. But all I said was this, I said, okay, so when you're eating your cabbage soup today, I want you to ask the question, does this feel like love? And if the answer is yes, girl, you keep eating that cabbage soup. But if the answer is no, I got you. I got better things you could be doing than eating stinky cabbage soup. Wow. And I think that's it. Whether, however you want to move your body, whatever you're putting in your mouth, whatever like job you're going for, what feels like love. And love isn't always a nap and bonbons. I mean, right. love could be, yeah, take your happy ass to yoga. <laughs> well, you will be happier when you leave. <laughs> right. Um, so what do you want your legacy to be? Oh my God, that's such a good question. I really want my legacy to be that I created a hub, a process, a community for women to come home to themselves. Mm, I love that. Can we just take a moment of silence for that? Mm. <laughs> 
Um, so what do you think, you know, out of everything that we covered, you know, from culture to loving yourself, to truly loving yourself, to really getting self-aware, what do you want the biggest takeaway from this talk to be? That it's possible that you could take exceptional care of yourself from a place of love and pleasure instead of deprivation and punishment. Yeah, I love that answer. Okay. So I always end with some rapid fire questions if you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Self-love is. The first thing that came to my mind was bear, but I'm really not (laughs) trying to just plug myself. (laughs) Self-love is paramount. Oh, I love that. I believe in. Your listeners. I'm grateful for. My family. And lastly, what's something that you've learned in life that you wish someone would have told you earlier on? That diets are a distraction from everything you want. Yeah. I, I wish I had known at 11. Well, and that's the thing too, not to interject on your answer, but mm-hmm. so many mothers that I speak to and that I'm friends with on social media, they're talking about their 10-year-olds, their nine-year-olds complaining about their weight and yeah. being fixated on that and crying when they get home from school. I mean, what is happening in our culture? That's actually one of my biggest stories of my why for this is that my daughter, I was already doing this work, but I, I have two sides to my business. So I have Bear and I have that helping entrepreneurs make money. And I was trying to make a decision of like, maybe I should just pick one. And my daughter came home from school. She was 10. And she said, mom, every girl at the cafeteria table today made a pact to not eat her lunch and go on a diet together. And mm. she said, that's messed up, right? (laughs) And I was like, right. And so she would go, I felt like I had this little elementary school vigilante. She would go in and be like, no, no, no. My mom says we have to eat. So we have energy for school and to not let the boys push us around on the playground. And, but it's, yes. I mean, and I think research now shows the average age for a girl to start dieting is eight. Mm -hmm. So it's, this, this work is critical so that ends with us Absolutely. And we are the models. Everyone Mm -hmm. listening here, you know, you have little girls, even little boys, you are the model of self-love and self-acceptance. And I'm just Mm -hmm. so glad that you're doing the work that you're doing because it is changing so many lives on a generational level. Thank you so much. It's true. Okay. So what, where's the best place for our listeners to find you? Where can they find all of your amazing work? So for the book, the best place is the website, letsgetbear.com. You can obviously get the book at any major bookstore or on Amazon. Um, if you want information about um, book clubs and book signings and how to become a bear certified coach, that's all on the website. Okay. And then you did mention you have something special for our listeners. Yes. So I have a bear membership community where I'm in there and my certified coaches are coaching people on issues that come up around food and body. And we have special classes multiple times a week. Um, It's normally $97 a month. And I want to offer your listeners a free month. Awesome. And so do they just reference the show or how do they get that deal? Absolutely. So they could email support at shyatt.com and mention the show and we'll add you to the group. And there's a whole digital program with videos and podcasts and a lot of great bear goodness. Awesome. This is such a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be on our show and just sharing your light and your wisdom and your unabashed, just badassery. <laughs> oh, thank you. I am such a fan of you as well. So it has been a delight. Oh, thank you hey so guys, much. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Susan. I hope it got you thinking about self-love and diet and pleasure in a completely new way. And if you would be so kind as to leave us a five-star review on iTunes, I would love to send you my own worksheet on self-care and how to make it a priority in your life. Some simple things that you can do, even if you're a busy, stressed out mom. So if you leave a review, screenshot it, and you can DM me on Instagram or email me at hello at motherhoodunstressed.com and I will send that to you ASAP. Thanks guys.